Good morning and thank you for joining us. Um, in today's lesson, we'll be looking at straight line geometry. So if you can remember, last year we started off with your guys straight line geometry and now we are going to be taking it on at grade 9 level. So just a bit of a recap now for the start of the lesson before we get into one or two examples. We can see here that we have our basic right angle triangle right and we know that this is going to be equal to 90 degrees in total right here we have our straight line angle and our straight line angle we know is going to be equal to 180 degrees and right over here we have our so you can see the point is at the end of the line our angle is going all the way around we know that this angle that goes all the way around the circle a circle we know is going to be equal to 360 degrees so when it comes to different scenarios that we could come across where they maybe split the angles up in whichever way all of a sudden we have two other angles inside our whole angle right so in our 90 degrees we have two other angles so we know the means of going about identifying sizes of these different angles right so like if this was 60 degrees over here, our sum that we come up with is, so let's say they call this x, we'd say 60 degrees plus x is going to be equal to 90 degrees. And as we know, with our statement that we give, we always have to have a reason, and our reason is going to be complementary angles. Cool. So we have complementary angles when we're dealing with 90 degree angles, and remember with the straight line graph, our reason we know is going to be supplementary angles or angles on a straight line are equal to 180 degrees this is just a shorter reasoning okay so once we do that we can solve for the x so we get x is equal to 90 degrees minus 60 degrees which is going to give me x is equal to 30 degrees so we pretty much get the point here same like if they gave us here um, let's say 60 degrees as well it's going to be 60 degrees plus x is equal to 180 degrees solving for x we can get 180 degrees minus 60 degrees and we get x is equal to 120 degrees so this would have been the x angle of a year which is the size which worked out to be 120 degrees now here if we get given let's say this angle of year is 120 degrees right so we have 120 degrees plus x which is going to be this leftover angle here right this whole thing going around here is equal to 360 degrees and our reason here is going to be angles around a point okay and you can say there that it's equal to 360 degrees cool then you're going to solve for x and you need 240 degrees cool so that's just a bit of a recap on these three basic rules over here but going back to something that's very important when we visit a straight line geometry if you can remember our fuzzy x right so the different angles that we'll be dealing with when we come across different shapes just to recap I refresh your memory is that when we're looking at the f we got angles that are either below these parallel lines okay so these are going to be parallel lines or they could be on top of the parallel line okay this is if this line let me just try and extend this line for you it's not going to be exactly the same thickness but bear with me so if the line is extending up we still have the f you can see so it could either be below the parallel lines or on top of the parallel lines cool so we know that these are corresponding angles cool then we know here with our u we have two parallel lines once again we know that these are co-interior angles and we know that these two angles added together equal 180 degrees that is our law of co-interior right coming to our z we have two parallel lines once again we know that these two angles on the inside of the arcs of the z right are going to be equal to each other and this rule is alternate angles then looking at our y over here 
we can see that this is a straight line going up, right? So here's our straight line over here. And the straight line gets cut by an angle over here, right? So this is basically just the straight line rule that we spoke about. And we know that with the straight line rule, these angles will add up to 180 degrees. The rule is angles on a straight line, right? I'm not going to write that here just for the sake of space. And then we have our x, which we know the opposite angles of the x are going to be equal to each other. And our rule is going to be called vertically opposite angles. My bad. Vertically opposite angles. So that works for up and down and side to side. So this angle will be equal to this angle and this angle will be equal to this angle. But these side angles will not be equal to these top and bottom angles. Cool. So they're exclusively equal to the opposites, hence the rule vertically opposite. Okay. So now that we've revised this, um, we'll get into some examples. So just a basic example now to refresh our memories on how we work the rules okay how we work the rules with our straight line geometry so we get given this nice graph over here you can see we get given line a b and c d and we told that these lines are parallel now something very important to remember is that when we are doing our statement and reason if our rule depends on parallel lines we need to say in our reason which lines are parallel okay so now first thing to do is look for our first angle right so we can try and find x first okay so let's see here. what can we see about x i don't know about you but what i can see is that we have a nice z forming over here backward z but a z nonetheless right and they form with parallel lines cool which tells me that this angle over here is equal to the angle of x okay and i'm gonna write that down so i'm gonna say x is going to be equal to 43 degrees and our reasoning is going to be that these are alternate angles now remember alternate angles they rely on parallel lines so we say a b is parallel to c d i don't have enough space but you could usually fit it in here next to it it's preferable that you just put it next to it so they know you're still referring to the same angle, okay? So here we have our statement and our reason stating which lines are parallel. Okay, so carrying on, let's try and find y over here, okay? So looking at y, there's two ways we can go about y. I'm going to do both ways quickly. So first way we could say, is that y forms part of a triangle and we know that in a triangle all the angles add up to 180 degrees cool so what we're going to do is we're going to say y plus x which is 43 degrees right plus 75 degrees is equal to 180 degrees now reason is angles in a triangle equal 180 degrees okay sorry i'm busy working with not much space at the moment but please bear with me and then what we're going to do is we're going to get y to be the subject of our equation so it's 180 degrees minus 75 degrees minus 43 degrees right so we just brought the 75 and 43 over that became negative so y is going to equal 62 degrees cool so let's just quickly put in what we found already so we found that x is going to be equal to 43 degrees and we found that y over here is going to be equal to 62 degrees cool so now what we're going to do is i'm just going to show you the other way that we could have worked out y so what i'm going to do is let me just get my other tool over here and i'm just going to quickly erase this method over here so just remember this one we use the law of all the angles in the triangle equal to 180 degrees now the other one that we could do as well i'm just trying to show you as much of the rules as possible so we can revise it properly is we could say that also a different shape is here now we have a sorry we have a u 
Okay. So having the U, we know we have the pedal lines as well. So the way we can go about solving that is we can say that 75 degrees plus Y plus 43 degrees is equal to 180 degrees. So now why are there three different angles that we're dealing with? That's because this one side of the U, the whole angle is made out of this 43 degrees and the Y angle. So that's why I've included both of them, okay? And then we just say the rule is co-interior angles, right? And because they rely on parallel lines, we know we got to say AB is parallel to CD. But I won't work it out because, you know, we just have to make Y the subject of the equation. You do your minusing and then you get your final answer of 62 once again. Cool. Now we need one more angle. So that will be angle number Z. If you can see all these three angles over here, if I can highlight that for you, all these three angles form on a straight line. So what's going to happen is we got to say our statement is going to be 62 degrees plus 43 degrees plus Z is going to be equal to 180 degrees, right? So our reason for that is going to be angles on a straight line or supplementary angles, okay? Supplementary angles on a straight line. So that will just tell us that it is equal to 180 degrees, cool. So now what we're going to do is we're going to make Z the subject of our equation, right? So we're going to have 180, bring the 62 and 43 over. So it's minus 62 degrees, minus 43 degrees. And that is going to give us a final answer of 75 degrees. So just like that, we found out the size of our angle Z. So we can put that in. And with that, we have completed this question. So now looking at our final example that we got going on over here. So what we're going to try and do is let me just fill in something here quickly. I'll call this D1 and D2 and we'll call this E1 over here and E2. Just so we can dif differentiate with these angles. Cool. We can't just say angle D and then I don't know which angle we are referring to. So what's going to happen is we're going to try and use firstly what we know. So we can see in this whole parallelogram over here we do not have a we don't have enough information we only have one set of information well we could find a different one but let's rather use the shape where we have most of our information which in this case is this triangle over here with the 90 degree angle and the 2x so what's going to happen is we're going to find the size of the angle d1 right so What's going to happen is, what they initially tell us is that D1 is equal to X, right? So that's what they initially tell us. So what's going to happen is, what we need to do with this information is try and work out the size of these angles. Okay, so I'm going to fix something up here because... I feel like it might be a bit too complicated in this sense over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that this angle over here is equal to 60 degrees. Okay. So what we're going to do with this is we're going to say we have our 90 degree angle. We have the 60 degree angle over here, right? So we're going to say 60 degrees plus our 90 degree angle plus 2x, which is this angle over here that was given to us, is equal to 180 degrees, right? And we know that is angles of a triangle equal 180 degrees. So once we got that, we got to obviously have x by itself. So we're going to have 180 degrees minus 90 degrees minus 60 degrees. So we're going to have 2x is equal to 180 degrees minus 90 degrees here. Okay. So that's 90 minus 60 is going to give me 30 degrees. And then eventually we're just going to find that x, sorry, we're dividing by 2 to get x alone. We're going to find that x is equal to 30 degrees. Cool. So we know x is equal to 30 degrees, so therefore we know that the size of this angle of here is also going to be 
60 degrees over here, right? So after that, we can work out sort of the rest of our shape here, right? So we know that a D2 is going to be equal to 180 minus 60. So this is going to be 120 degrees over here. And we know that this is also a 90 degree angle. So this is going to be 90 degrees over here. Obviously, we'd have to write out a statement as well. So to be 180 degrees minus 60 degrees, right, is going to equal T2. And the reason is angles on a straight line, as you know. So that's just working, that's just showing our working out for the 120 degrees that we got over there. Okay, so we know D2 is going to be equal to 120 degrees. And here we have our 90 degrees over here. So we're just going to show how we got that quickly. So we can say here quickly angle E2 is going to be equal to 180 degrees minus 90 degrees. Once again, angles on a straight line. So we've just shown that we got that 90 degrees over there, right? Which makes sense because this 90 degrees on the one side is going to form another 90 degrees on the other side if we're on a straight line, right? So last thing that we're going to do now is we're going to say that so we got three different angles here already, okay? And we're missing one other angle over here. So with a parallelogram, we know that all angles inside of a parallelogram are going to add up to 360 degrees. So we have to work that out. So I'm just going to clear up a bit more space. I'm just going to take out all of this working out over here, just so I have enough space to do the last one. And you'll see that in this example, not all angles are going to be proportional to what you see over here. Um, that's common with maths where we will work out and the sh the shapes or the size of the angles that we find aren't directly proportional to what we see in the drawing. Okay, so we're just going to have 90 degrees plus 120 degrees plus 90 degrees, which is B over there, right? Plus angle A is equal to 360 degrees angles of A. Sorry, that's supposed to be one L only. Angles of a parallelogram. Cool. So, A the subject by equation. So, if we work out all of that, we eventually can get that A, angle A is equal to 60 degrees. Cool. So, that's just a bit of a revision for our our normal um, straight line geometry. So we didn't use much of a straight line geometry in this example, but you can see in situations where we could have, you can see here that we have our parallel lines over here. So we could have also used it to find out this 90 degrees over here. Cool. So that is the lesson for today. Next week we'll be carrying on with straight line geometry where I can get in better depth and try and do a bit more complicated examples where we can apply our straight line geometry more intensely. So make sure you view that video. Thank you.